Hey guys, what's up? And this is TFA Gaming, and today we'll talk about 50 new features that they've added in the game. Believe me, there are 50 new features in the game, and I cannot wait to explain each and every one of it so that you can make your decision if you have to buy the game or not. Super knock on, double flick the right stick forward, and you'll see your player completely go Gareth Bale Berserk on Mark Batra. The knock on flick is farther if you flick and hold the RS on the second flick than if you flick two consecutive flicks. So basically, flick RS and then hold the RS flick, and you'll see a big, big knock on. Technical clearances, press the R1, RB button and press the shoot button and this new mechanic will kick the ball into the universe to waste time more in the game. These are those type of clearances where the player gets the ball and he clears it no matter where it goes, how far it goes. This is gonna happen when you press RB, R1 and then the shoot button. First time skill moves. You can perform skill moves this year when the ball is approaching and has not approached the player yet, you can perform it in the middle and when the player receives the ball, they will perform the skill move. The FIFA 22 main menu has completely changed, even though I can't share the screenshots, it's a bit like FIFA 13 and everybody knows how good that menu was 7 years ago. Icon switching, this is a new form of switching that provides players with a surefire way to select their desired player. To activate icon switching, press R3 while defending and you will see UI elements on 4 of your players, each in a specific direction and you can flick your right stick towards any one of them and change your player. Bigger goal moments, another one that is the next gen exclusive for will happen is basically if you score a goal in the last minutes. In a very tight game, you'll see these amazing new animations that the player will perform. Running to the sideline, the whole pitch goes crazy, the whole stadium goes crazy, substitute managers, everything, everyone goes crazy and this kind of animation is really appreciated. Hang on free kick, hold RCR2 during a quick free kick to hang on to it for a few more seconds and give your teammates more time to get into position. Deeper match analysis. Starting with a match back screen, new visuals helps you to compare the performance between you and your opponent. In the revamped summary section, you can always compare more detailed breakdowns of key aspects of play including possession, shooting, passing and defending at the end of the match. The David Beckham free kick animations added a unique animation to replicate the iconic David Beckham animation. So they have added a side free kick animation that replicates the David Beckham curl free kick. A new ball control feature has also been added. What it does is it adds two touch animations that make controlling the ball more natural and it enables players to trap the ball in a specific way with more fluidity and precision. It won't work if you're pressing RT R2 if there are players around you and the left stick should remain untouched. Another change coming to the next gen is how the wall of the free kick works. They completely react differently, stand in an opposite direction sometimes, jump in a different synchronization, talk to each other, turn back, talk to the goalkeeper. So these kind of visuals have changed inside the next gen in the free kick visuals. Goalkeeper rewrite. When designing FIFA 22, they have completely changed the way the goalkeeper works. 600 new animations, focusing on how the goalkeeper makes the save tips the ball over the frame of the goal, shows agility on dives, punches the ball away on a corner, overall complete movement has been changed when it comes to the goalkeepers, but this is a feature that is available on the old gen and the next gen. Explosive sprint is a mechanic that rewards the timing and your intelligence on the ball, giving player more noticeable acceleration when pressing the RT R2 button in the right and the precise moment. What explosive sprint does is basically when your player is running in a straight line and it does not work when you're not running in a straight line, you press the RT R2 and your player will start accelerating in the right moment. It is not that overpowered but if timed correctly you will get an advantage and beat your man in front of you. Always remember that defenders can do an explosive sprint as well, so timing it does depend on both ends. The competitive settings and the master switch. These are basically settings that will be switched on in foot rivals, foot champions, online seasons, co-op seasons and pro clubs. The settings are as follows. Contextual dribbling will be off, auto clearances will be off, auto flare passes will be off, auto shots will be off, assisted headers will be off, 
jockey will be manual and through assistance will be semi so basically this is a switch to make sure the top fleet of competitiveness in the modes we play online stays the same and the kickoff couch gaming will be as casual as possible player humanization this is the backbone of the off ball humanization they were talking about last year this is another one that is exclusive to the next gen what this does it plays random animations on players around the ball asking for the ball pointing towards players that are available calming down players in their 90th minute situations stuff like that interceptions and disrupt interceptions disrupt interceptions are a mix of between controlling the ball and blocking the goal here is to disrupt the course of the pass even if that means not retaining the ball so basically disrupt interceptions is gonna be when your player will completely destroy whatever is going in front of him and take the ball away from the attack kinetic air battles is something that is exclusive to next gen again and this is a situation that triggers when an air battle system starts so for example you cross the ball in in the corner this system will take over the animations and make sure that the players involved will jump for the ball coming out with the outcome of clearing it or scoring the goal new tactics new customization tactics and instructions enable more gameplay variety for fifa 22 one of the main biggest differences is breaking down attacking tactics in two sections builder play and chance creation this separation can enable players to have more control over their play styles so now the attacking section of the tactics menu is kind of divided in two overlay headings one is build up one's chance creation definitely adding more possibilities and more probabilities coming up with new stuff in your tactics menu the earlier call shot or the push-up R1 and RB and L1 and LB can be pressed before the goal kick starts and having players already start in the desired position. So before the goal kick starts, you can press the R1 RB or the L1 LB and your players will be already standing beforehand when you take the goal kick. True ball physics. They have used real world football data from football matches as a foundation for FIFA 22's ball physics, helping to improve the ball speed, swerve, air drag, air resistance and ground friction and even rolling friction. So basically a new ball mechanic is coming and you can feel it while looking at the trailers how the ball is bouncing and like reverse rolling and stuff. This kind of stuff never existed in FIFA before so it's quite good. Hypermotion Gameplay Technology Hypermotion is the foundation of FIFA 22 on the next generation consoles. It's a new way of animation and it makes the game more fluid. The way players move in the game, the way it looks from the top down perspective, it is a much more fluid and a surreal experience compared to the last years of the game. So Hypermotion Technology, a very big feature and changing the next gen experience. ML flow and machine learning it's a new system that takes into account 8.7 million frames of motion capture and makes sure how players move around the pitch it's gonna decide to how to move players relatively to each other so it can guess and make the player movements accordingly so it's a smarter way of making runs and making players move in the pitch now let's switch to pro clubs. Every pro club player know that they can't find 10 teammates to put in a game. So they've added a new drop-in system where you can search a drop-in match with your past four searching teammates. You can gather four teammates, you can add friends to it. So a lot of options when it comes to drop-in match and the drop-in match will take care of your preferred position instead of fighting instantly who gets the striker position. The pro clubs player growth system. In pro clubs they have completely changed how the player growth system works. It's based on XP now so gameplay actions performed during a match and the match rating of your virtual pro contributes to the final XP gained for that match. A summary of information will be displayed at the end of the game of what actions grant more XP. So for passing, tackling, saves, you get different type of XPs and you can upgrade your pro accordingly. There's a new perk system just like Call of Duty that you can use for your virtual pro. Every virtual pro will start with one perk slot in which you can use the three starter perks. As you progress further, you unlock more perk slots, one at level 9 and then level 19. 
This makes your Virtual Pro with 26 different perks to apply in 3 different slots. There are 4 different categories of perks available, attacking perks, chance creation perks, defensive perks and obviously goalkeeper perks. So the attacking perks goes as follows, distance shooter, one time shot, set piece beacon, clutch finisher, hot streak, quick replay. These are different perks that increase your attacking abilities and you can check the description in the menu once you're in there and select the best ones for you. The pro club's archetypes. FIFA 22 has new archetypes that you can select for your pro. The archetypes are equipped through skill points made available at the end of a skill tree bench so you can equip up to 3 archetypes depending on how you allocate your skill points. The pro club customization options have also changed. They are as follows, you can customize kit and crest, ball, home stadium, club nickname, T4, stadium name, stadium color, seat color, pitch line color, pitch wear, pitch color, pitch pattern, net pattern, net shape, net meshing, goal song and crowd chance. So there are lots of customizations available this year. The Elite Division is a new division that's beyond Division 1 and the Elite Division consists of the best foot players of the world which EA will use to select who will compete in the eSports. Foot Champions or the Weekend League is not a Weekend League anymore, it's spread out on the whole week and you can play anytime you want. To qualify in this, you have to play a playoff tournament and the finals so that you can play your games whenever you want and earn rewards whenever you want. Co-op Matchmaking Co-op has completely changed this year, you can play co-op with anyone you like, to search matchmaking and ultimate team will find a co-op buddy for you and you can play your co-op games like that. New T4 customizations behind your home net, we have Excel T4s that can be combined with smaller T4s. Speaking of which, they are showing a Manchester City TIFO. I doubt like they have that many fans to show such a TIFO, but it's alright. Switching over to career mode, there's a big addition this year and that is create your club. You can create your club and assign a name and a nickname for that club. You can even select the league that you play in and you can also select the team that you replace. There are numerous numbers of customizations available for your team in career mode. Following being kit customizations, kit away customization, club crest customization and stadium customizations. You have four color slots to customize your own kit and make your own creation. The first one being primary, secondary, tertiary and you can also use a name and number color slot to completely customize it in the end. You can also make your own club crest with the similar options. There are a lot of shapes to choose from and you can come up with anything new. There's also pitch patterns that you can customize in your stadiums. So there's a lot of things that you can customize when it comes to create a club. There's a new squad builder screen that you'll be facing this time you create a club. What you have to select here is the overall star rating, the age of your squad and a transfer budget and also the board expectations. You get 11 random players here and you can completely decide how powerful they become or how bad they are when you start. There's a manager rating option inside of player career. It's basically how the manager looks upon you. So for example, if you play really good, he's gonna give you more minutes. But if you play really bad, he's gonna drop you. The board expectations tab has a lot of settings that you can customize. Being football giant, youth focus, small club, or there is even a custom option that lets you customize each and every minute detail that your board expects from you. Moving on to the player career, the first thing that has changed here is that you can come on as a substitute. Their aim is to deliver a youth prospect climbing up the ranks. So if the manager substitutes you, you'll see this screen and then you'll be popped up straight to gameplay and then you'll go and play. You have the option to sim the match if you don't want to play it. Dynamic TFOs. What they've done is they've made a system if your player career does well inside the career mode section, the game will take a screenshot of him celebrating and auto-generate a dynamic T4 for him. How cool is that? They have expanded the stories section when you come back and check the hub. There are multiple stories that will be displayed if your player crosses a certain milestone. There are multiple stories if a youth club does very well. On the next gen consoles, they've added a new reveal cinematics when you get a new managerial job. We've also upgraded the transfer announcement news to take place in the stadium, not just in the press room. The transfer update cinematics, they've refreshed the transfer negotiation cinematic sequences to provide a more vivid experience as you try to get the best deal out there possible. They've also added the ability to start and stop scouting a player from the transfer hub. 
the dressing room atmosphere cinematics. They've added new cinematics at the end of the match in player career and they will reflect your team and your player's latest performance from celebrating a trophy win to a dramatic loss in a derby. The same perk system that's available inside of pro clubs is available in the player career system so you have three slots to apply 26 different perks so you can enjoy customizing your player career as much as you want. The new skill tree has been upgraded inside a player career Previously you had to upgrade the attributes the way they wanted but now you can upgrade your own selected attributes using the skill tree system that they've changed inside FIFA 22. Switching over to Walter football if anybody gives a shit there's a new skill meter in the game which actually forces you to do skill moves and you can score 3 or 4 goals in a single goal if you get more points on the skill meter. Signature abilities in Walter are brand new easy to use game changing abilities that you can trigger during a match. There are three types of signature abilities power strike pure pace and aggressive tackle it's kind of very obvious of what they do there are two player celebrations in Walter. last year we saw players run towards each other and celebrate after they scored but instead doing something together they awkwardly circled around each other until the celebration timer expired so we took this behavior into account and we've added new two player celebrations Volta Arcade is a game mode online where you can play a bunch of these mini games added by EA. This game mode is very similar to the Fall Guys and at the end of all these mini games the guy with the most points wins the whole game. Thanks for watching this video guys. If you made it this far you guys are legends. This is 50 features that you need to know of this new game. I'm extremely excited because this video was extremely easy this year because there are a lot of features that you can actually acknowledge in this game. Otherwise in the last years it had to take a lot of digging to find 50 new features. But in this game I could have made 100 new features actually but I was like extremely tired with all of these videos to come out. Anyways like, subscribe and peace.